Hi guys, welcome to Last Humans Tech. We're going to go over some basic Linux commands today. So we're not going to go too in depth on the very, very basics such as ls, pwd, cd to change directory. If you want some of the real basic commands there, you can watch the part one of my Solaris basic commands, which is basically the same thing, which can show you the low, low level commands that are the most basic you can use. So let's say we want to know what shell we're in here. You can simply do an echo shell. Remember, echo is going to show what this variable is set to. So if I do this, it's going to tell me that this user is using the bash shell and it shows a path to the shell. Now the user has certain environment files which load all the variables for the environment of their login. So one of these files would be the profile and the other is bash profile. Let's see here, we probably have a bash profile in here. Let me get it back into my directory. And you can see bash profile, bash rc, these are my environment files which are going to load upon time of login. Let's take a look at the path environment for example. And you can see here that my path environment has my home directory in it. Let's say that we want to change to root user. Now I'm going to add a dash which is going to load that user's environment. You can always put a dash in there to load their new environment. If you don't put the dash there, it's going to keep your existing environment when you do this. So let's go ahead and do this, and then I want to show you something. Now we're in root, and remember we loaded a new environment. Let's do the echo path again, and let's compare it to the path above. As you can see, it is much shorter now because it removed these custom user paths of Mark G, which we do not need, since this is the direct root environment only. So that is how it is loading those profiles and those bash profiles and even a bash RC file when you do logins to prepare the environment for that particular user. Let me clear the screen. Let me go to Etsy and let's look at the profile. Now the Etsy is system-wide files so this is the system-wide profile. You can see it is a little bit long here and this is what runs first and if you log in as a different user it's going to log a customized profile under that but this is the system-wide profile environment setup that is going to be used we're going to use the clear command to wipe our screen remember and we'll just do an AL here on an LS to show you recall that the first column of your permissions here will give you information on the type of file so you have D's for directories and L for links and this is also color coded on this particular Fedora version where the directories are dark blue and the links are light blue and regular files are green. Let's clear again. Let's look at the alias command. This is a command which allows you to set up a code word so to speak for a particular command or set of commands and you can customize your own personal alias for a command that you use all the time. You can also use alias to run a set of commands at the same time. So you can customize and make shortcuts to your common activities. You can see that the default system aliases that are built in here add a dash i option to the move and the remove commands. The dash i is interactive and what this is doing is it's going to ask the user are you sure in each of these cases and this is kind of a safety measure so it's built into the operating system to make sure you don't accidentally remove or move a file that you don't really want to move. One more way you can do multiple commands here let's say we want to look at the passwd file separate with a semicolon and we're going to then just echo a path variable so the semicolon can string together many commands in a row. So what we should see here is the passwd file and at the very bottom we should see the path variable for this environment. And if we go all the way down, we started right here, it has your passwd file and you can see at the very bottom 
it has your path file. Notice it did not have any spaces. It's just continuous output here from semicolon to semicolon. So sometimes it can be a bit hard to differentiate. But we do know that it echoed the path on the very last line here. All right, guys, let's take a look at the where is and the which and determine the difference in these. Let's start with the where is, and we're just going to use the cat command, for example. This is going to search the operating system and find the cat command. Here you can see it found two instances of this. And sometimes you may want to know, well, how do I know which one is running when I type a command? In this particular case, it's easy to tell because one of them is a gzipped file. But let's just say you would then do which, and you can kind of use English with that and go, that means which command is going to run. And this will kind of have a more focused search. And it's going to tell you exactly which command is running when you type that command. So where is is a more broad general search, which will find every instance. And the which is when you want to know the exact command which is running when you type that command. There are two ways to look at your environment variables. The first one is env, and we can pipe this to less to slow down the screen. And you can see this is a very long file, and it's very unwieldy and hard to use. I'll just do a Q and get out of that. Now the set command is a little bit better command. It's going to put this in alphabetical order for us. Incidentally, you can see right here, you don't need a space after the pipe if you don't want. It just depends on your personal preference and habits. So we're going to look at the set command now, which will put this in alphabetical order. Here you can see it is much more easy to read. It starts with the Bs. So if I had a choice, I'd always run the set command rather than the env command in order to look at all my environment variables. Let's go ahead and make a new variable. In quotes, I'm going to make a variable called name. Now this is already active in this particular shell. Let's go ahead and do a set less again. And let's see if we can find it here. Here you can see right in the middle, we have that variable that we created. Let's go ahead and quit out of that. We can make sure that the variable is good, echo name, and there it is. Now this variable will only be working in this particular shell unless you do an export. Now this variable will be active in every one of your shells until you log out of the machine completely. At that point, this variable is going to be gone, and you could add this variable to your dot profile or your bash profile, one of your login scripts, if you want it to always be there. But the export command will only make it viable until you log out of your machine. But you could jump to four or five different shells and users and this variable is still going to be there. There are three different ways to get help. And one of them would be the dash dash help command. And that's going to give you some options. It's a very simple, precise help file, which is easy to read. Of course, you do have the man, which is probably the most common help function. And you would use the man first, and then the command you're looking for. And as you can see, this is a much larger file, not quite as easy to use. Now you also have the info command, which is going to give you info on that particular command that you're trying to run. So here again, you have info. So you have the dash dash help after your command. You have the man. I'm not running these. I'm just showing you. And you have the info. Those are three different ways you can get help on any command that you were trying to run and to figure out the different options associated with it. There is one other help which is only active on a few commands and this would be one of the commands. So 
This command expects an argument, right? It expects a file. If you don't type it, this command has a little, little help section here, which is going to give you some advice on that command. Now, not all commands have this, but this is kind of a built-in help, aside from those other three. And this command will give you help if it senses that you're not typing the command correctly or using the right syntax. And it, again, gives you more information here. So that's actually four different ways that you could get help on any particular command. To finish up here, if you would like to know the system that you are on, you have the uname command. Now this will, without any options, this is a very simple command. It's not going to tell you much. We know we're on Linux. So I like to use a uname-a or all, and this will give you much more information, even your host name, if it had one here, your operating system version, kernel version, one CPU, and the date and time this particular machine was installed, and the various platforms that it's going to work on. All right, guys, that's the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed this Linux basic command section here. Now, I don't claim to be any guru. I'm not an expert. I'm learning with you, and I enjoy practicing these commands and reestablishing them in my mind while also letting you reestablish them in your own mind. So I do hope you enjoyed this, and there will be a part two coming out next. Thank you.